怒りの感情は捨て去るべきものさあ全力でかかってきなさい我は鋼全てを断ち切るものです全言い訳無用ですさあ耐えてみなさい Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to be talking about the way to build Ariane Rod, who is the other SSR that came with the Trails of Cold Steel collaboration. I'm personally not going to build up Ariane Rod, even though she is a good character. And the reason I'm not going to build her up is primarily because I don't have a slot to fit her in. Every player is only able to build up three characters at any given point in time because you only get nine gates of fate, which means three runs. Per hero, split it between three heroes. Due to that, I'm personally currently building up Ares, Licorice, and Reen. Reen was the character I chose on this banner, the Trails of Cold Steel collaboration, and thus I don't have a slot to build up Ariane Rod. In that sense, you can almost say Ariane Rod is a whale toy. Not because she's a bad character, but simply because players who don't put money into the game are unlikely to have a slot to build up both Reen and Ariane Rod at the same time. So, a brief summary of Ariane Rod is that she's the armored waifu in this game. And her primary role for PvP is that she is an AoE attacker that can actually dispel three buffs from the enemy. Furthermore, she, her talent actually allows her to act again when she is damaged, and the amount of damage she has to take does depend on the star level, so more on that later. Other useful aspects to Ariane Rod is that she's one of the few heroes that can actually bring three AoE skills into battle. And another useful aspect of Ariane Rod is that her 3C allows her to gain a physical and magical barrier, and both barriers will reduce the damage of the next attack by 90%. So, in order to kill her after she's used her 3C, you need two physical strikes or two magical strikes. You can't mix up a physical strike followed by a magical strike, or they're both gonna get that 90% damage reduction, which is a huge hassle in dealing with her. And finally, she has quite versatile class options. Her two main classes are either Lancer or Holy. Lancer class will do additional damage to a Cavalry Landius, while her Holy class will have no real weaknesses or strengths against anyone. Well, in her Holy class, she will do additional damage to Demon class enemies, but Demon class enemies are honestly very, very rare. So let's move on and talk about details to Ariane Rod now. So first, Ariane Rod's factions. She is part of the Reincarnation faction, she's part of Mythical Realms, and she's part of Time and Space, of course, being a collaboration hero. The main faction buffers for her as a result will be the Mythical faction buffers, as well as Time and Space. So that would be Hobo Landius, Gizaroth, Joshua, Yusuke. Theoretically, you can say that Angelica would be a faction buffer, but nobody uses her. And technically, Ares is a faction buffer as well, but in the case of Ares, nobody brings his faction buff. As a result, she does have four effective faction buffers, so there's more than enough faction buffers for her. So let's talk about her talent now, Steel Maiden. It has three primary effects. The first one is that when unit hit points is above 70%, damage taken is reduced by a certain percentage. 5, 8, 11, or 15%, depending on her star level. The second effect of her talent is that after taking damage, or if she ends turn within the danger zone of the enemy, you gain the following effects. Attack is increased by 2, 3, 4, or 5%. Damage dealt is increased by 2, 3, 4, or 5%. Damage taken is reduced by 2, 3, 4, or 5%, and she gets movement increase of plus 1. This buff that she gets can actually stack up to 3 times. So she can get 15% increased attack, 15% increased damage dealt, 15% reduced damage taken, and plus 3 movement. So the longer a battle goes on for, the stronger Ariane Rod gets. This is what makes her very useful in both PvP and PvE content. Her final effect of her talent is that when ending a turn, if her hit points is below a certain percentage, 50, 55, 60, or 70% hit points, she can act again. And the cooldown on this act again trigger is 4, 3, or 2 turns. So it's this last effect that really requires you to have Ariane Rod built to 6 stars. Because a 70% hit point to trigger and act again makes it very easy to trigger, and also the cooldown reduction of act again to down to 2 turns makes it very easy to use. It actually means you can use it every other turn. She just has a very very powerful talent. 
which makes her very, very good. Worth mentioning as well is that the first part of her talent and the second part of the talent stack. So if she's above 70% hit points with three stacks, it means she has 30% damage reduction. Now, getting three stacks of the danger zone or, or taking damage can be fairly difficult, of course. It is worth mentioning. But if you're facing against an AoE team, it's actually not too hard to get all those buffs. So the longer the battle, the more powerful Ariane Rod is and the harder she is to kill. With the talent covered, let's talk about the bond requirements. The second bond is actually unlocked by doing five victories with Ariane Rod. The soldier bond, the third bond, is unlocked by clearing Time Rift 3-1 Elites with Ariane Rod. The fourth and fifth bond are unlocked by getting access to her two classes, so Lance Maiden and Steel Maiden. In terms of maximum stats, the Holy class has more hit points and more defense at the cost of less magic defense. So you can see there's 48, 46 hit points against 4207 in the Holy Steel Maiden class. Attack is the exact same. Defense wise, the Lance Maiden has 344 defense. Steel Maiden has 307 defense. But in terms of magic defense, the Lance Maiden only has 251 magic defense, while Steel Maiden has 341. So what you can say is Steel Maiden is much more balanced and should be pretty hard to kill if you enchant properly. Whereas Lance Maiden has extremely high defense, while the magic defense is low and it will be very hard to avoid getting one-shotted by magical strikes. The main thing to mention though is attack and skill are the exact same for both classes. So offensively speaking, either class is viable. Finally, her soldier boost is a very defensively oriented one. The soldier boost gives 15% hit points, 20% attack, 30% defense, and 35% magic defense. However, it's worth mentioning once again, her talent, the stacks of buffs will affect the soldiers. So you can say with three stacks, the soldiers will also get 15% increased attack, 15% increased damage dealt, 15% reduced damage taken. You can almost say in a lot of ways, they can get up to 35% attack increase. So this is another aspect where the longer the battle, the more powerful Ariane Rod gets and the higher damage she deals. 35% attack is very similar to, to the attacker soldier boost where they get 40% attack. All right, let's move on. Ariane Rod's heart bond effects. The Lance Maiden class will have at level four, 10% AOE damage reduction. At level seven, when attacked in melee and entering battle, damage dealt is increased by 10%. And of course, level 10 is all hero stats increased by 5%. As for the Steel Maiden Holy class, at level four on the heart bond, when attacked and entering battle, magic damage taken is reduced by 10%. At level 7, when attacking a target with hit points higher than yours, damage dealt is increased by 10% after entering battle. And at level 10, all hero stats increase by 5%. What you can say here is for the Lancer class, both boosts are very defensively oriented. AoE damage reduction is always useful, but the level 7 one, the fact that it requires you to get melee attacked to trigger makes it mostly useless. As for the Steel Maiden class, the Steel Maiden class actually has a decent, although not great, offensively oriented one. Because if you're attacking targets with hit more hit points than you, then you get increased damage, 10% increase. It's hard to have less hit points than the enemy that you're attacking though. Overall, I think you'll end up using the Lance Maiden ones because Lancer Ariane Rod will do additional damage to Cavalry Landius. So let's move on then to talk about the useful skills of Ariane Rod. Two of the skills are pretty much preset, and it's the first two listed here. Her Awakening skill, Grand Cross, and her one cost skill, Sturmlance, should both be brought for PvP battles. Grand Cross has an AoE skill that targets herself. It has a span of three. So it's not three rings, it's just a three span around herself. And it attacks all enemies in range, dealing 0.44 times AoE damage to them and dispelling three buffs. So 0.44 times AOE is actually one of the higher ones. I mean, Black Hole and Earthquake, I think, do what? 0.36 and 0.4 times respectively. So 0.44 is actually one of the highest AOE skills. And the dispelling of three buffs is huge. You can get rid of three parts of a faction buff. You might get rid of the guard skills. It's just a great awakening skill. And after you use it, she gains a physical barrier where the next instance of physical damage is reduced by 90%, as well as a magical barrier. The next instance of magical damage is also reduced by 90%. Both of these effects though, cannot be gained again for three turns and the buffs will last three turns. So 
one thing to mention as a result of this is, let's say you have clocks on the Iran Rod and you use Grand Cross twice in a row. You're not going to get the physical barrier and magical barrier two turns in a row. It would be absolutely insane if you did. As it is, forcing the enemy to waste two attacks to kill Arian Rod is already great. So that's our Grand Cross Awakening skill. Next, Sturmlands. So Sturmlands will attack enemies in a line, and it's a 5 line attack, and it deals 0.25 times AoE damage. And when attacking with this skill, you transfer yourself to the furthest tile in this skill range. You can't say it's amazing or godlike, but for a 1 cost skill, this is great. It can be used strategically, such as shifting you forward to trigger your talent. Or if you use it later on, when you have a lot of mobility buffs, you can shift in front of the enemies, then Sturmlands back, either into your tank's guard range, or maybe out of range of an enemy assassin like Zerd. So that would be 4 points in terms of cost. And then the last 2 points that you spend for the third skill, she has 2 additional AoE skills, and which one you use will depend on the situation. The first one is Total Destruction. It's a physical attack that hits enemies along 3 lines and it deals 0.35 times AoE damage to them and pushes them back 2 blocks. The range of this skill is only 2. It basically hits the enemies in front of her. So it's like a, a rectangle in front of her, 2 by 3. So it's very limited in range in other words. As for Anglia Hammer, it's a self attack with a span of 2. So Grand Cross has a span of 3. This Anglia Hammer only has a span of 2. So it's actually quite a small spend. And it attacks enemies within 2 blocks of herself, dealing 0.35 times AoE damage, inflicts a damage minus 20% debuff on the enemies. And this debuff will last 2 turns. So between Total Destruction and Anglia Hammer, it will depend on the battle, like what enemies you're facing. You may rotate freely between these two skills. It's worth mentioning that in her banner battle for Ariane Rod, you got to use Grand Cross, Total Destruction, and Anglier Hammer. So this is actually a 7 cost combo, you can never get that normally, but the banner battles are really just introductions to heroes to playtest them. So you got to see all 3 skills in use. I'll have linked that video in the video description, so if you want to see the 3 skills in use, you know, just refer to that video. Alright, let's move on then to talk about her other skills at this point. So her other skills are actually fairly useful, but most of these skills are PvE oriented rather than PvP. Ariane Rod actually has two single target strike skills, and they are Armor Pierce and Judgment. Having two single target strike skills means that Ariane Rod can be quite effective for PvE content. Armor Pierce does 1.5 times damage, allowing her to one-shot targets, and Judgment does 1.2 times damage. Judgment is a fairly weak single target strike skill, but nonetheless, assuming she has a bunch of her talent stacks, giving her you know 15% increased damage, 15% increased attack, and so on, Judgment will definitely do enough damage to allow her to kill things. She then has three other skills. Adversity has an effect where when unit hit points is below 70%, attack and defense is increased by 10%. This one is probably the most useless of her skills. She has Hegemony, where when entering combat, you dispel one enemy buff and inflicts a minus 20% defense reduction on the enemy. So this is the same skill that Bernhard has. And finally, she has Fair Fight, where when unit hit points is greater than 90% and entering battle against an enemy with lower defense, this unit will attack first. I feel like Fair Fight is garbage for Ariane Rob because it counters the Act Again option of her talent completely. If you're using Ariane Rod in PvE content, you would probably bring Armor Pierce, Judgment, and Hegemony. Hegemony will debuff the enemies, making them easier to kill. Removing a buff is just an added bonus. It may also be useful for a Thunder Dragon, where you need to dispel two buffs every turn. And if you're going to use Ariane Rod in PvE content, you're probably going to use her in her Holy class. In her Holy class, she can actually equip Mjolnir. With Mjolnir and Hegemony, she can dispel two buffs from enemies. So that would probably be the build if you use her purely for PvE content. Armor Pierce, Judgment, and Hegemony for 6 costs in total. And it will be a Holy class Ariane Rod rather than a Lancer class one. Of course, if you use her for PvP, it will probably be a Lancer class Ariane Rod bringing 3 of the 4 AoE skills that were covered in the previous page. So let's move on. Upgrade materials for Ariane Rod. For her first awakening, 
she needs 8 Abyss Crystals and 8 Life Crystals. For her second awakening, you're going to need 12 Pure Continental Hearts and 12 Pure Monsoon Hearts. Of course, you need 5 Splendid Stardusts and 5 Eternal Moon Splendors. As for the regular leveling up of Ariane Rod, the materials are listed on the right. She uses 4 different types of seals, so 22 of each seal. This is different from Reen. I think Reen for both classes uses the exact same materials. So he used 44 materials of the same two types, whereas Ariane Rod uses four different materials. With the materials covered, let's move on to talk about Ariane Rod's soldiers. Ariane Rod has access to seven different soldiers, and they are a mix of Holy class soldiers. Lancer class soldiers, and actually, interestingly enough, cavalry class soldiers. Three of the soldiers that would are absolutely useless to her, in my opinion, is the Exorcist, the Vanguard Lancers, and of course the useless heavy cavalry. So that leaves four potentially usable soldiers. And these soldiers do mostly serve different roles. Zealots are just a great general purpose soldier, and the fact that she can use them is very nice. Because as long as soldier hit points is above 80%, for every equipped buff, the soldier's attack, defense, and magic defense are all increased by 15%. Meaning with 3 buffs, she can get up to 45% increase of all of those stats. The second usable soldier for her is the Heavy Centurion, where attack and defense are both increased by 30% when you're attacked. So this is a more defensive soldier. It's a Lancer soldier that's inherently defensive. but it's a viable soldier for her if you have them leveled up because with heavy centurions, if you're launching out AoEs, you're not that likely to attack the enemy directly. So the heavy centurions will protect you when you get attacked instead. The Amazon champions are the offensive soldier for her. So these ones will increase attack by 30% when attacking, and they also have a 75% probability to reduce the enemy's defense by 20% for one round. Interesting to note here is that the Amazon champion debuff of defense will not stack with the hegemony debuff. So with regards to Templar Knights, they have two effects. The first effect of Templar Knights is that magic defense is increased by 45%. So this makes Templar Knights a great anti-magic soldier for her. The second effect is that when battling against demons, attack and defense are increased by 45%. Realistically, you're never going to trigger that effect. So Templar Knights will be another defensive option, but they're a defensive option against magic strikes. I would say overall, her best soldier would be the Zealots, because they're general purpose. The other three are soldiers which you may use if you have them built and you somehow don't have zealots built, or in certain circumstances, you're going to use these soldiers. So with the soldiers covered, let's move on to talk about equipment for Ariane Rod. This is not a comprehensive list of equipment, I just put together four example sets. My personal opinion is that her primary set should be a clock space set with the following four pieces of gear. So the first item is the Scarlet Reaper, because the Scarlet Reaper will allow her AoEs to do additional damage to the enemy, especially if they've already been damaged, so you get an extra fixed damage strike on them. The second item that is very viable is the Aeolus' Battle Armor. This armor will reduce ranged attack damage by 30%. If you're using her in her Lancer class, this is extra protection against magic strikes and can save her, potentially allowing her to live. The third item is the Fury of Tear. This one will increase the damage she deals, so always well worth bringing. And the last item, her accessory, in my opinion should be the Apex Boots, because while her talent will steadily increase her mobility, she does start off as a mere 3 mobility character. So having the Apex Boots allows her to start off at 4 movement and eventually increase up to 7 movement, which is far superior to starting at 3 and then increasing to 6. Remember, you have to either take damage with Ariane Rod, or else you have to be able to get into the danger zone of the enemies to start triggering her talent stacks. So that extra mobility will very much help. Clocks, of course, is to allow her to toss out AoEs endlessly. While she has 3 AoE skills, if you can toss out her Awakening skill 2 times in a row, that's better than tossing out weaker AoEs. Even if the second AoE does not let you get the magic barrier, and the physical barrier, doing 0.44 times AoE damage is still superior. So that's why this is her primary set, at least in my opinion. The secondary set, which is quite viable as well, is 
you're bringing a Breeze enchant because you don't have Apex Boots. So you're hoping for a 5 mobility chance to more easily get into range to AoE the enemy and just you know launch out the damage to them. In terms of the gear, you're going to bring a Peacemaker potentially because Peacemaker can disable passives. Keep in mind though that Peacemaker requires you to melee attack. So you have to single target strike to trigger it. AoEs do not trigger Peacemakers as if disabled. The second item that would be potentially worth considering is the Carbon Fiber Armor. So this one is worth considering because if you get reduced below 50%, you get 8% attack increase and 8% skill increase. So that will allow your AoEs to do far more damage. Of course, the drawback is that you do have to get knocked below 50% hit points to trigger this effect. So it's kind of a trade-off. You have to survive the enemy attack and then be able to launch out your AoEs. But if that happens, you're going to have the extra attack and skill. Once again, I have listed Fury of Tear as the helm because of the 10% increased skill damage and so on, and 10% damage reduction. And the Judge's Talisman will be the accessory if you don't have Apex Boots, because Judge's Talisman, it basically allows her to do additional damage to Holy Class enemies. So doing extra damage to enemy healers and so on makes them easier to kill. Always a nice bonus. Other sets I have included include the following. Rather than the Scarlet Reaper and Peacemaker, you have a Ragnarok. So that deals fixed damage to the enemy before combat. You have a Bloodline Magic Armor for reduced physical damage chance. You have a Carbon Fiber Helmet, which functions the same way as the Carbon Fiber Armor. And then you have a Wing Shin Guard, which increases your defense and attack. And increases your defense by another 10% when you get attacked. So this would be an other set that's more focused on single target rather than AoEs, but it's very viable for PvE content. Right? And most of these items are very easy to get. You can very easily also replace the Bloodline Magic Armor with the Carbon Fiber Armor. So that way you get 16% attack and skill increase. Finally, worth mentioning is the final set. With Holy Class, you're actually able to equip hammers. So the Mjolnir and the Mimir's War Axe both become viable options for equipping. In this set, I have Gaia's Helmet and Gaia's Armor because they both offer a 10% physical and magical damage reduction respectively, as well as giving you 15% defense or magic defense increase when you're attacked. And then finally, an Overlord's Badge because it provides all stats increase of 5%. So this is more of an optional set. The other enchants for these other sets that I've mentioned is Magic as well as Full Moon. Magic is viable because it allows your single target strikes to get the 10% increased damage and AoE skills would get 15% increased damage, while Full Moon gives all stat increase of 10%, as long as you're above 80% hit points anyways. So overall though, I personally feel Clocks would be her best enchant, but that's my personal opinion for Ariane Rod. Let's move on then to talk about the very last point, which is her Class Mastery enchants. So in terms of class mastery, you can say in a lot of ways she's very similar to other DPS attackers. For the armor and headgear slots, they should have defense, hit points, and attack value. For the weapon and accessory slot, you're going to want attack, hit points or defense, and then skill. So that way you can get the 40 skill increase, and given that she has a base skill of 159 in both classes, the 40 will raise her skill to a total of 199 skill. So then you have to decide whether 199 skill is enough or not. If you don't think it's enough to protect you against Omega, you're going to want a skill enchant in the arena section for another 75 or 80 skill. If you don't want the skill increase, if you think 199 skill is enough, then you will probably add maybe magic defense as the last enchant rather than skill. The other four enchants are pretty much standard. You're going to want attack for maximum damage. You're going to want defense for maximum survivability, hit points for maximum survivability. And then the last enchant, in my opinion, should probably be the reduced crit damage enchant because it can reduce crit damage you'd receive by 31%. So that also increased survivability. All right, so that's the way to build Ariane Rod, in my opinion. So at this point, let's move on to some battle examples of Ariane Rod in action. Yeah. 
Jin Jong is top. So the first battle example I'm going to use is one from the Chinese server yet again. This one should be a semi-finals match on their server in Season 5. And the Ariane Rod is on the Player 1 side, where Player 1 has both Rin and Ariane Rod. So clearly, wailed up both characters and has them both at high stars and thus used them both. So the first bands was of course Juggler for both sides, and then both sides now play Landius as their tank in their cavalry class. So player 2 bans Zerda and Iris. And now same thing, Zerda and Iris. Liana is played by player 1. Player 2 now bans Bozel and Ares and plays Bozel. So then player 2 bans the remaining two healers. Iris and Wilder, and plays Joshua. He loses Reen and Leonhard now, and player 2 plays Licorice. So Ares and Reen are now banned on player 2 side, and player 1 now gets to play Ariane Rod. Wilder and Lis uh, sorry, Wilder and Le Rene ban, player 2 plays Rene. And then player 1 bans Mystery Knight and Yusuke and plays Listel. And finally, player 1 picks Rene. So, one side, basically, player 1 has an AoE team with Joshua and Ariane Rod and Listel, right? Landius is the tank and will faction buff up Listel, and Liana is here for healing, act again, and so on. Player 2 also has an AoE team, but it's a dark faction focused AoE team with Bozel, Rene, and Licorice, Landius to tank, and Deedlet for healing. All right. So, player one is running Templar Knights on Landius because of the extra magic defense the Templar Knights have. Right? There's basically no physical attackers on player two's side. The only physical attacker is Landius himself. So it makes a lot of sense to run Templar Knights here. And Rene starts things off with an extreme range Calamity throw. So, we can see here that Ariane Rod got a mobility buff, which means this Ariane Rod is running Breeze. Because it has that mobility buff that it just got. So, Landius now maneuvers towards the middle of the map, activating Peace of Mind, ready to protect everyone. Player 2's Licorice begins her transformation to Demonic Advance. And also Peace of Mind, of course. Ariane Rod starts approaching and gets her first talent buff. and activates faction buff. So player 1 is now starting to push in aggressively with Nestel maneuvering forward. Joshua now maneuvers forward and uses Dark Demise on the enemy Licorice. And also King's Crown buff on Ariane right now. So she responds by using her 3C skill, self-healing herself and doing some damage to Nestel. The debuff that was applied onto Listel was a mobility debuff, which certainly helps. Bozel now gets to put Landius to sleep. So interestingly enough, Listel is used to apply Reaper's Touch on Licorice. And Listel gets attacked, so Liana comes up to heal. Patter matter, AoE damage, knockback, debuffs. So the debuff hell has started. Liana, so you can see three additional debuffs, or sorry, two additional debuffs on Listel, three debuffs on Liana, and Landia should have gotten a bunch too. So 
Arianne Rod now runs in and does a single target strike on Lendius. Gets takes damage enough to act again. Okay. And with the act again, launches out an AoE, which takes out Licorice and kills the first life of Landius. Also doing a lot of damage to Rene, as well as Bozo. So she also gets her 90% damage reduction, which is why Deedlet doesn't try to finish her off and instead takes out the healer of player 1. So Listel now drops the Blood Dance, the fixed damage hit actually does nothing to um, does nothing to Deedlet, who clearly has Meditation Ring, but it does do a whole bunch of damage to Landius. So Rene continuing to launch her long range AoEs. Joshua, Phantom Raid, that Phantom Raid finishes off Landius. Now, if Player 2's Landius had Source with Metal, of course this would be very different, but it doesn't. So now, a second AoE from Ariane Rod. This one was Anglia Hammer. Right? Wipes out Rene, does good damage to Bozel. So it's just now it's just Bozel and Deedlet against four characters. I mean, Deedlet's doing well, kills off Joshua, but Arianrod now jumps in, does a single target strike on Bozel, gets to act again because she is still below the 70% hit point threshold, and finishes off Bozel. So now it's 3 against 1, and battle is over. So what we saw was Arianrod taking full advantage of her ability to act again, to wipe out enemies by acting twice in a row. She launched out single target strikes, she launched out AoEs, she purposely did a single target strike on the enemy um, on the enemy Landius at the start to kill off her own soldiers. And then after that, she could act again. So we can see here, taking full advantage of her talent to just smash the enemies over and over again with AoE strikes, with single target strikes, and so on. As for Ariane Rod being used on the international server, Ariane Rod shows up in a lot of the whale accounts. Okay? Um, for example, in my group, in the Roy Lee vs. Manson fight, Ariane Rod showed up multiple times. It's worth going over simply because Ariane Rod does show up on both sides. So I'm not going to go over the pick ban phase here, I'm just going to jump right in. But player 1, Manson, is running Ariane a time and space team. Right? Joshua fashion buff for Ariane Rod, Estelle, and Deedlet. Zerda is here with Obliterate, Killing Glow, and Alhazard Bloodthirster. On the other side, you have Ariane Rod with Zerda, Bozel, Wilder, and Landius. Since Ariane Rod on Royley's side doesn't have a fashion buff, Wilder is brought for strengthening. So I do remember this battle where Nansen or Sweet Dango got far too aggressive in this first fight. He basically did a he basically attacked without his characters being able to properly support. But it is worth watching simply because it does show how incredibly annoying it is to actually kill Ariane Rod. So, quick mention, I feel like that was actually a mistake here. He should have moved Ariane Rod and Deedlet first before having Joshua faction buff. That would have made the faction buff last an extra turn. He already did cheer with Estelle, so he should have moved these other characters first before faction buffing with Joshua. In any case, Characters maneuvering forward. And Ariane Rod is strengthened for Royley. Bloodthirster activation. Peace of mind. This was a weird choice to gospel up 
Arian Rod right away. But it was because Sweet Dango really wanted to attack right away. So now, here's the attack, the start of it. So, first things first, Dark Demise, which does not kill off Zerda, so she gets regrouped. And then Arianrod jumps in with the Grand Cross. So, it's worth noting that this Grand Cross did an insane amount of damage to Landius. It's just an AoE. But that AoE knocked this Landius from basically 12,000 hit points to 5,000. So this is the whole Lancer against Cavalry advantage doing additional damage. And you can see also that Landius lost a whole bunch of buffs from that attack. So you know, he went from having a mobility buff with his faction buff with the talent buff to basically losing one part of the faction buff, losing the talent buff, and so on. The 90% damage reduction means that Broly's Grand Cross did a amazing 2 damage to this Ariane Rod. But because of regroup, Zerda was able to follow up that attack and wipe her out. You literally need two attacks of the same type to kill off a character. In this case, it was a physical attack followed by a physical attack. Otherwise, you'd need two magic attacks, which is difficult for Royley to combo with this party. So, one Arian Rod down. Phantom Raid, doing basically no damage to Arianne Rod here because of the shield. Now this is interesting. So Arianne Rod wraps around Joshua and Sturm Lances to get far back. So she's now behind Landius and safe from Manson or Sweet Dango's Zerida. Another Lancer versus cavalry advantage, so Estelle's AoE was able to wipe out Landis' first life. Bloodthirster activation, and reactivation of Bloodthirster because of Sea of Miracles, reducing its the cooldown by one. So a big disadvantage there where Zerda could not get into range to attack. In large part because Arianne Rod used Sturmlands to retreat. So it was a big issue here. What I mentioned earlier where Manson or Sweet Dango had attacked too aggressively without other characters able to support. Right? He should have waited for a bit longer for the map to get smaller before assaulting. But because he got impatient, he wasn't able to back up Arianne Rod or Joshua, and thus they both died. And you can pretty much say at this point, the battle is mostly over. Especially when there's Desperate Prayer up. Zerda does get to jump in to attack Arianne Rod and take her out. But despite that, Royley will also kill off the enemy Zerda with his Zerda, and the battle is all but over. So, we'll just leave it here. But we did get to see Arianne Rod. In order to kill them, you need to chain two attacks of the same type and that can be fairly difficult at times. In most of the other battles, 
I don't think you actually see Arianne Rod die. So if I jump into some of the final matches, Roy Lee continues to use Arianne Rod. I already reviewed the Zansen versus Roy Lee match, so I'm not going to review it again. But let's take a look at the Roy Lee versus Hakuo match, because of course Arianne Rod will show up yet again. So we have the usual juggler ban for both sides. Landia shows up, and then Roy Lee bans Bozel and Rainforce, picking Landius, of course. So Reen and Illustrial are banned, and Hakuo plays Zerda. Roy Lee bans Hiei and Luna, and plays Listel. So Zerda, Ares banned now, and Ares is played for Hakuo, while Roy Lee will now ban Imelda and Liana. So act again and plus one mobility and stat buffing, of course, and play Ariane Rod. So Wilder, Yusuke ban. Aquo plays Wilder. He loses Licorice as well as Angelina, and Rodley plays Liana. And finally, Gizaroth Bozel ban. Joshua is played for Hakuo, and Rodley will play. Deedlet. Interesting choice there. Deedlet over Iris. That's a bit of a surprise to me. Iris with the forward teleport and so on might have been more useful, but I think the choice was because he already had Liana, so he didn't need a second healer. At least Deedlet can single target strike as well as heal and gospel. So I think that was the reason for that selection. Liana here is bringing heal, gospel, and act again. Arianne Rod with the usual Grand Cross, Thermlance. The skill that Broly is bringing is Total Destruction for the third one, better than Anglia Hammer. And Lestel has Blood Dance, Reaper's Touch, and Mind Bore. Alright, so let's jump in. Start by maneuvering forward and faction buffing, the usual. Because battle is not going to start right away, Hakuo simply moves while they're back, does not activate high stakes. And in the first place, high stakes isn't that great in this kind of situation. So. This was, this is an interesting thing that was worth mentioning, okay? Because Ariane Rod has very low mobility initially, right? Since it's just three mobility, Roy Lee chose to use Sturmlance to maneuver Ariane Rod forward. So by Sturmlancing, she was able to charge up here, which was in range for Landius to trigger the first talent stack. So now Arianne Rod has 4 mobility. Hakuo regroups there so that she can act again. And so, avoiding Zerida, royally retreats back. Joshua now jumps in with a Dark Demise, dispelling some buffs. Doing some fixed damage to Liana, so Liana self heals, and Talent heals the spell back up. So Ares now jumping in with a Wind Whisper, the teleport of characters within two rings, and then the AOE hits. Not enough damage to kill off Liana. Though. So that was interesting, actually. Let me just go back and take a look at why. Okay. Liana was not at... Liana actually didn't take all that much damage. This is interesting. Despite the Shrine Maidens not being at full hit points. Let's see. So she, he goes in. He has 1805 attack. 
but Liana just tanked that easily. That was very interesting. Let's take a look one more time. I'm actually not sure why. Ah, Wind Whisper didn't hit Liana, that's why. That explains it. Yeah. The most critical part of this AoE, the Wind Whisper didn't do any damage to Liana, so she easily survives it. So big mistake on Hakuo's part. And so Deedlet, Elvin Aura, wipes out Joshua. Once again, it's this is another situation of pushing in too aggressively, too early. But Zerda does get the jump on Liana, who got teleported to the front and is killed. So now Ariane Rod, single target strike, so that she's below the health to act again. And the AoE hit to dispel buffs. And look at that. Ares lost all his buffs and is knocked to a nearly dead state. Right. Zerida lost most of the faction buff, although she luckily kept both attack increase and damage delta increase. And Landius lost a bunch of buffs too. I think part, a large part of his peace of mind buff. Hakuo starts tactical retreating, but Ares is out of that tactical retreat range. So Ares gets killed. And now it is 4 against 3. And it's worth noting, look at this, Ariane Rod still has... Because of the 2 turn cooldown on that act again, it's now down to a 1 turn cooldown. Since she acts again, and it reduces the cooldown a bit. So, gospeling up, Ariane Rod. Getting to act again and just moving up. And Listelle now jumps in, tossing out a blood dance. And Ariane Rod follows up with total destruction, killing both Zerida and Wilder. And that right there is game over for Hakuro. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video useful to you. And on that note, Nitro out.